Hello there and welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. So once again, we have a wonderful blank canvas. This is an 11 by 14 inch cotton canvas that has been toned with a neutral gray acrylic. So we're gonna be working on an acrylic tone. And to be honest, just because I didn't really have time to oil tone uh, this canvas, but you know, acrylic works just fine. So I'm gonna be using titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson permanent, cadmium red, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium green, sap green, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. And if you would like to know exactly what materials I'm using in terms of the uh, brands and all of that, I'll have that information typed up in the description box down below. But also down here, we have our odorless mineral spirits in this little container. So this this little container here contains our odorless mineral spirit. And this little gel here that you'll see me use uh, periodically is my Neo McGilp. It's a fast drying medium. It just helps to increase the fluidity of the oil paint. And just like I did last time, I created a few post-it notes from your comments. Again, you don't have to do anything special to get a post-it note. Just leave a comment with a question or some kind of suggestion and I'll go ahead and write a post-it note. And um, I would try to comment in the most recent videos because these post-it notes I actually just made um, prior to making or prior to starting to film this video. So this is from uh, Deborah Flesh, Fleshman. So you were talking about the fear of of the start, so the fear of starting an oil painting without a preliminary drawing. And so just to tackle that, let's go ahead and have a very interesting way to start this painting. And before we begin, here is an image of our model. Her name is Catherine, <laughs> I almost forgot her name. So here is an image of our model, Catherine, and I'm gonna keep a picture of her to the top left corner of your screen. And Catherine is the same model I think that, uh, I don't know, a couple videos ago or maybe even a week ago, uh, we painted her in the, the last paint along that I created. But uh, to get back to the question, so the fear of start without drawing. So, you know, the more and more I create these paintings, the more and more I feel like I can just do this. Like just start in any kind of way that you want, so long as you know what you're after. So we're going to actually mix the flesh tone on the canvas for the beginning of this painting. What? Yep, that's what we're doing. So um, basically just a combination of all my reds and then um, the cadmium yellow deep, just because I like a warmer, a uh, more saturated start. And we're gonna start off with a very simple flesh tone. Okay, so the idea of starting a painting without a drawing, in particular a portrait painting, is a very, very daunting thing. It's a very daunting task. And what I'm trying to get on the canvas right now is just a very simple flesh tone. Now I'm actually gonna go into my, uh, my flake white. So remember flake white, uh, for those of you that may be new to this channel, flake white is, it has this property, I can't speak today, sorry. It has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much and you're actually seeing that here. And this is actually going to help us quite a bit right now because we're just trying to get some paint on the surface. And uh, so the idea of this flesh tone that I'm trying to put in here is very similar to my older portrait painting tutorials where I would, um, you know, start off with something that I would say that's a little bit warmer and darker, just because when you work lighter and lighter with say the titanium white, it will get lighter and lighter, but also cooler in temperature. So we're actually doing something very similar to that. And you know, I think it's just a little too generically, uh, too generic, kind of like a band-aid color. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some nuance to this with the, uh, the greens. So I'm gonna use the cadmium green and sap green and a tiny little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue. I guess this is also a way you can mix up a very unconventional flesh tone. But again, I really want to get that fear of starting a portrait out. Just get rid of it, get rid of the fear. It's just jump right into uh, 
the painting. I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of the, uh, the difference between uh, linear construction and mass oriented construction. This would be a mass. This is our first mass essentially. And this is just me trying to sketch in basically uh, the parameters of the face. How much of the canvas or how much of the rectangle here do I want the face to take up? And the smaller it is, the more difficult it will be for me to to gauge the uh, shapes, you know, we're gonna we're gonna build some very intricate shapes, believe it or not, into all of this stuff. And uh, sorry for that momentary pause there. So I, another thing I read in the comments, though I didn't really write it down, is uh, my camera kept on auto focusing last time. So let's, let's double check this. So hopefully this camera does not focus on my hand. See, my hand is like really close, and it's still focusing onto all this. So yes, I set it to manual focus. It took me uh, a little while to figure out <laughs> how to do that on my camera. But get, but again, another advantage to this filming style is I get to see the monitor like right in front of me. I am painting with a camera like right next to my head. That's how I'm able to get this kind of uh, camera angle. And I do have the angle with respect to the canvas that is the lighting in the uh, studio uh, measured. Uh, not not terribly measured, but it's it's measured in such a way that it minimizes the glare. But anyway, uh, hopefully that will get rid of the uh, autofocus problem. Now let's get back into the painting, shall we? So a little bit of titanium white, and I'm just trying to get a nice little mixture here just for some kind of flesh tone that I can lay a ground on. So this is an unconventional flesh tone, and some would say an unconventional... Uh, some would say a very unconventional way to start. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a smaller brush and we're going to start working with masses. So I'm going to add a little bit of um, Neo McGilp to this brush and this is going to be our drawing brush. Now, now as you mentioned, the, the fear of starting a portrait without outlines, now that's a real fear. And then when, you know, you imagine yourself starting a painting Without outlines, you imagine, like, what am I going to do? So here are, uh, here's going to be the way I'm going to approach it. And it's going to be very similar to the way I approached the past two portraits that I created, just because I feel like this way just kind of makes it a little more simple. Now look how basic it is. It's just a mass, right, for where I think that the face is going to fit. And I really hope my camera doesn't mess up the autofocus. But anyway, so it's just a mass. And then now I'm going to jump right into the shape of the eye sockets. And I, I find more and more these days that jumping right into the eye sockets, you know, like it helps me gauge this angle. Like what angle do I have with respect to the eyebrows? It's a very important angle to talk about. So it's not, you know, it's not like this. It's not like this. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, but, you know, it's very close to being straight, but angled slightly in this way. And that angle could be photographic distortion, but we're just going to, you know, we're just going to let that let that slide. So let's go ahead and put some little indications here for where the eyes are going to fit. And again, the important thing is to know what you're after. So if you're going to want to start a portrait without a preliminary drawing, you know, you'll be fine. Just know what you're after. And I'm going to try and talk a little bit about the, uh, the differences between painting using a line, so filling in the lines, uh, versus a mass oriented approach, which is the, the approach that I've been kind of trying to emphasize with the past couple uh, videos. So in essence, a mass is this right here. This is a smaller mass that's fitting within a larger mass. And the idea when you're working with large uh, shapes, large simplistic shapes of oil paint, is that it really does optimize uh, the maneuverability of the paint. Notice how I'm just going right into shadows now. So oil paint has this property uh, that you know uh, that allows it to stay Dry. It's dry, really. <laughs> yes, it's hard to paint and talk at the same time, but it's kind of funny to hear me mess up once in a while. Anyway, uh, oil paint stays wet for a very long time. Even when you use a fast dryer like Neo McGilp, like I'm, like I'm using, it allows you to not have to lock in to any one particular decision right away. And so that's how we're constructing this painting is we're not worried about the, you know, the final touch. We're not worried about, well, uh-oh, it's going to dry in this stage, and now what? No, not at all. 
we're letting the oil paint be oil paint. We're letting it just explore the surface. So right here is going to be a little corner for the cheekbone. And already, already I'm kind of locking into just putting the face kind of in the center, but a little bit higher up, you know, the same type of thing that you've seen me do several times for my portrait studies and my portrait sketches. But I think that at least for you know the experience of painting, I think it's important to really experience the paint handling, experience what it's like to move these shapes around. And, it, and it's okay if the painting looks like Mr. Potato Head in the beginning and not the model, okay? I'm not talking about the model, I'm talking about the painting. It's okay if the painting looks kind of goofy because right now, right now we're starting to enter in the first awkward stage. And so awkward stages are things that, um, and well, the awkwardness of painting a portrait, you know, it's always going to be there. It's just that we human beings are not used to seeing an unfinished face. We're not used to seeing, uh, you know, just light and shadow or, or whatever. We're not used to seeing an unfinished face. So that's just something that we're going to have to work with, you know, the awkward stage. And it's something that we just eventually, you know, learn to accept. You know, we need to learn to accept that creating a portrait is something, you know, that has a very different psychological uh, effect on the human mind than saying, than say painting a thing of flowers. So right now what I'm just trying to do is establish my working space and I'm trying to minimize the amount of useless useless brush strokes. And so by useless brush strokes, I mean I'm trying to minimize the amount of work that I have to do to say what I want to say. So in a way, I'm trying to be more direct with the painting. So a little bit more a lizard and permanent and ivory black and now we're going to start to add in some more variance into the values because this is going to be a very nice and rich dark and again oil paint allows you to do this oil paint allows you to um, you know it, it allows you to work in a very loose very kind of sculptural type of way if you would imagine a block of clay now a block of clay is never going to dry on you. Now, of course, I'm not a you know not an expert in sculpture, but I know that there are you know materials and sculpture that you can use that are kind of meant to, to kind of for a student to feel around and sculpt and not having to worry about you know firing the sculpture or something and making it final. And that's the kind of advantage we have with oil paint. So I encourage you to do this, I encourage you to do something like this, just to put a big broad brush stroke in the direction of where you think the eye is going to fit. Don't worry about if that's going, to, don't worry if that's going to be the final location for the eyes. Don't worry about it at all. Try to build the portrait, build the thing from the inside out. Don't worry about, you know, the, uh, the fear of, oh my goodness, this is going to dry on me. What am I going to do? Rather, we're trying to construct our way around the shapes. Taking into account the, the idea that oil paint is a very forgiving medium. That's, you know, I've been saying the same thing over and over again, but you, you get my point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these, these shapes and we're going to start to refine the, uh, shapes of light and dark a little bit. More importantly right now what I'm trying to do is just establish a color that I want for the the cast shadows. I can always come back in right into those shapes and add more and more refinement. Now I want to think about the the position of the model's head relative to uh, to the viewer relative to me. So the model's head is in three quarter slightly. I mean, this is very, very slight. And you know, the only way I can really tell is just because of the nose. I'm gonna to have to be very cautious with the center line of the nose. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you one of the reasons why I really like working on glass. The glass is very easy to just pick up paint, shovel it around, with your palette knife or with a thing of uh, what you might call it like a razor blade 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to get into planes. So I'm going to use the same brush that I mixed this this color up with. And yes, I did just put the white in there. Uh, so the titanium white, I'm going to add a little bit more Neo McGilp to this brush. And the emphasis in the start is to be free. Liberate yourself of the fear of having to have a perfect outline. And if you want to go back to, uh, you know, the video of where I started my last large painting that I've been kind of neglecting, but um, the large painting that I started, I was fairly happy with the start of it. Uh, I won't get too much into that since we're not working on that painting, but uh, essentially, I experimented with myself and and by experimenting I mean experimented with my technique and I started a large painting without any kind of outlines just throwing in uh, basically burnt umber titanium white and then just f figuring out where large shapes were going to fit and surprisingly it worked for the start of that painting. Now I won't get I won't get too distracted talking about other paintings so Right now what I'm doing is I'm mixing up a very simple gradation of basic flesh tone. And so right around here is going to be the middle tone region of the palette. So I am using a little bit of more warm colors. So I'm using the cadmium red and the uh, alizarin crimson permanent. And then as I move on down, I'm going to go towards the burnt umber and then the ivory black. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the Neo McGill medium, and I'm gonna make the middle tones a little bit darker. So a little bit of a lizard permanent, a little more ivory black, burnt umber, and I'm gonna move into another post-it note soon. And for me, writing out the post-it notes with your comments actually kind of helps me out. I know that I paraphrase the comments, but it also, just the, the fact that I'm writing them down, just the act of writing it down, just kind of, you know, puts more, into my mind so I think about it more kind of like when I was in school I would take notes by writing things down I don't know how, how you took notes when you were when you're in school but I would have to write things down a lot sometimes I would just remember but writing down I think is a very useful way to remember things I'm gonna go and add another little drop in uh, these colors so a little bit of cadmium red medium and uh, cadmium yellow deep. I'm gonna leave that flesh tone alone. And I'm gonna make another little pathway down here. And the cadmium yellow deep actually helps to bring up a lot more warmth into the flesh tones. I think that ought to be good for the flesh tone variations. So uh, for this post-it note, uh, I don't know, I have no idea how I'm going to pronounce this one, I'm so sorry. Uh, R-E-U-V-E-N-M-A-G-N-E-S uh, asks, Do I use more alizarin, crimson, or cadmium red on the cheeks, nose, and lips? Now I'm going to get another brush. And first let me quickly double check here with the auto focus. Okay, my hand is closed, but it looks like it's still focusing on the face. Okay, that's good. So, um, to answer your question, I'm going to answer it by basically painting and answering the question with it as I'm painting. So I'm going to put in, let's start off with the flesh tone for the cheeks. Yes, I do use uh, the alizarin crimson, or in that case, it's alizarin uh, crimson permanent, and that color is uh, the Winsor & Newton's version. So there you have it. That's a very simple uh, color variation for the cheeks and the flesh tone. And I do work my way up towards the uh, cadmium reds and the lights, but um, the, the real thing that helps me out with the subtlety of the flesh tones, if I'm gonna be completely honest, is this uh, color value web. And uh, the, the way that it helps me out, hold on, I'm gonna have to get another brush here. All right, so now we have another brush, and I'm gonna use a little bit of sap green, again, into this middle tone region of the uh, the palette. And we're working our way from the, the inside out. Okay, so back to the question. It does help me to have these colors already kind of organized on my palette in this value web. And uh, I think that it's, it's very useful, 
Now, going back to the question, I think that it's very useful to have uh, kind of some very, very rich reds on your palette, especially if you're going to be doing portrait. Um, now, cadmium red medium, I tend to prefer a little more these days than light, but I may end up buying cadmium red light. I am actually running out of my cadmium red medium, which is a tragedy because I'm going to have to spend more money. Uh, those of you that are oil painters, you know what happens when you start to run out of your cadmium red. That's like one of the most expensive colors. So I'm going to use a little bit of the cadmium yellow deep and I'm starting off with the colors and I'm starting off with very rich and warm colors that I can eventually uh, add more specificity to and I'm not worried. See how I'm not worried about you know eyeball or anything like that. Instead I'm focusing on the the inner shapes. So the shapes within And I'm building the portrait, you know, you can see literally I'm building the portrait from the inside out Likeness is not a problem here. Likeness is not an issue. I'm not worried about it. Likeness will come as long as I observe the shapes I interpret the, the likeness will arise now a likeness is another thing that I, I could and probably should talk about especially in this stage of the painting where likeness is not even there's no so some folks it would seem that likeness is impossible uh, to start in this way but one thing that I've been uh, playing around with in my mind. So one kind of idea that I've been working with lately is the idea of mass versus line. So right now we're working completely with mass. So again, those of you that are interested in planes, this is a very clean gradation of planes. Here's a plane, see that? The light region there, that's a plane, 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 plane. Each change in value that you're seeing me apply will indicate a change in the plane. So again, the concept of line versus mass is a very interesting thing to talk about. Now you're starting to see that the face is starting to become very uh, volumetric. But again, when you're working with portrait in this kind of way, again, that portrait's gonna go through awkward stages. And in particular, if you're gonna work in Alla Prima and working in this type of fashion, the awkward stage is much more, much heavier, I think, uh, which is fine. It's just something that we have to work out. And what I mean by heavier is that, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be so honest because this conversation is just between you and me. So when I'm starting out a portrait, I'm very fearful of the way that the portrait looks in every single stage. So when I have, you know, like no eyes, but I have face, like the structure of the face, but no eyes and nothing with the nose or the mouth or anything, it frightens me. Just like it would frighten most people, you know, to see a glimpse of someone without any features. It's almost like, you know, seeing a ghost. But it takes time and it takes patience to work through that fear and that timidness. So I'm just going to build a little more light. I'm actually going to use a little bit of a warmer touch. And again, just like the last few paintings, I'm going to do my best to show you every single brush stroke involved in creating this painting. And I'm gonna try to take my time. I have been reading through the comments more often. Like I, I mentioned before in the past, uh, I was actually uh, very fearful of the comments just because, you know, I tend to get not so good comments once in a while. And I get it as a YouTuber, shouldn't be worried about that stuff, but you know, we're human beings. We don't like being attacked, but in any case, I'm doing, I'm going to do my best to continue to read all of the comments and again from my more recent videos so that I can create the post-it notes and keep the conversations going. And I hope at this point you, you like the post-it note system. And again, you don't have to do anything fancy to get a post-it note. I just go through the comments and I, I just look for the questions that would be uh, 
most suitable or the comments that would be most suitable to talk about during uh, the painting process. And as I'm doing this, I realize I just switched brushes. This is supposed to be my darker halftone brush, but I think we'll be okay. Let's go ahead and add in some more cadmium red medium. And another thing I uh, read in the comments, it seems that uh, it's okay for most of you if, if I upload longer videos. And by longer, I don't mean like an hour each day, I think, but by longer, I mean that you know, showing you every single brush stroke as opposed to editing things out that I would have deemed that people just wouldn't want to watch. And that seems to be working out pretty well with everyone, so um, I'm glad that you're enjoying the longer footage. So again, I'm just trying to solidify this shape and like I said, we're working from the inside out, so I'm not terribly worried about, you know, the boundary or where where the, the ear goes out here or anything like that. I'm just basically constructing these shapes from the inside out. A little bit more cadmium red. And in this way, uh, and it, we're building the, uh, the subtlety of the face right away so that we can continue to add more structure. And again, a very interesting topic that I want to talk about is line versus mass. So right now, this is pretty much all mass. And so the basic concept is, um, you know, when you're working with mass like this, it's actually a little bit more liberating. It's a little bit, I would say, a little bit more free to work in this kind of way. But at the same time, it adds the difficulty of drawing. And in particular, uh, most of us, myself included, are very focused on outlines. And you've seen many of my, uh, you know, my previous videos where I would start out with a very, very careful outline and then, you know, transfer the drawing and stuff like that. And that's perfectly fine. It's just that this is a different way of working. So here, here's the thing. With mass, the way that we're working here, it's very, very suitable for oil paint. I am not an expert in acrylic, so I won't really say whether or not it's suitable for acrylic. I don't think it is, but I'm not entirely sure. So now the thing about working with mass, it gives you more freedom in terms of not having to worry about, you know, closing out an outline. Everything is open. Everything here is open. So when you keep everything open, you're able to work from the inside out. And let's go ahead and uh, illustrate that even more. So now that I have some little dark indication for the hair, I'm gonna go ahead and start to sh put in some shapes for the orbiculars oris, and this is what I mean by open, okay? So a little bit darker over here, just because this plane is, as you know, facing the light a little bit less, and look how quickly we have indicated that plane change. So again, we're going to, you know, instead of painting in the boundary of, you know, the outline, the careful little mouth or whatever, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at these large masses. And again, a mass-oriented approach is very counterintuitive to the human eye. The, the human eye, in my opinion, is much more at ease when, you've, when you're using an outline, when you're closing in an outline, kind of like a paint-by-numbers book. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is just more liberating. This is just more fun. I really encourage you to do it. Don't worry about the final result. Don't worry about, oh, is this painting going to be realistic? Are people going to, you know, are people going to like it more on my Instagram or whatever? Try to not worry about that. And it's difficult because it bothers me too. Sometimes, you know, some of my paintings, even though I had more fun with them, uh, on my Instagram, it just gets like a quarter of the likes. Um, and that's a very real thing that, that we should talk about. 
And again, I just feel like working in this way, you know, we're just exploring the surface with the oil paint. I think working in this way, it just adds an element of surprise. It adds a little bit more, um, dare I say, fun. It tends to be more fun for me, and it may not be for you, but you, you know, it's just one of those things you have to try. So right now, what I'm going to do is now that I covered the bottom of the chin, now I'm going to start to close in on more specific shape. And notice my key word here, shape. And this is how we start to link, the, you know, the mass-oriented approach with the linear approach. There are no lines involved in this, just structure. And as we start to add in more and more shapes, automatically, automatically we're going to refine the outlines. It's just the nature of how this works. All right, so now we have another post-it note that is actually going to be relevant to this stage of the painting. So uh, again, I'm sorry if I cannot pronounce the name. Debra Schulman. So uh, one thing you said was that the 30 to 45 minute uh, video, you know, the splits that I've been doing, the video split, um, you, you seem to like the 30 to 45 minute. And this seems to be the general consensus. Some folks like uh, the longer, even longer videos uh, than this. But uh, to be honest, uh, for me, adding a little bit more than an hour each day is a little bit hard for my computer, but you know, it's something I can do, but it's just a little bit easier for me to do the 30 to 45 minute uh, each day. And again, you will see every brushstroke involved in uh, the paintings that are filmed in this fashion. But now uh, the question that's relevant here right now is uh, am I still using multiple brushes? And again, forgive me for my handwriting. So to answer that question, yes, I am using multiple brushes. Down here, I do have multiple brushes. This one was the one that I used to charge the, the brush, or charge the brush, <laughs> charge the palette. Uh, this one I was using kind of like for these uh, these half tones here. And this one was for the, the lighter planes which I guess I should be using a little bit more of these. Um, pretty soon though, I'm going to transition into the smaller brushes. So I already have them here ready for battle. I think I'm gonna give the larger structures a little bit more work. Um, to be honest, I'm really trying to paint as fast as I can, <laughs> just so that um, you know I can produce the best result uh, more quickly. But um, let, let's just go ahead and take this even more step by step, okay? So the alizarin permanent and the burnt umber, and again, this is the brush, the little brush that I had before for the, um, you know, the initial little shapes that we started out with. And again, I'm going to continue to solidify these forms. And as I solidify, these forms, as I solidify these masses, notice around here, you know, you start to see an outline just automatically, automatically start to emerge. And I think at this point, I need to slow down with my talking and increase my painting. So as I get in more and more into focus, I'm probably going to speak a little bit less, but that's just the reality of these things. Now I'm gonna to try to continue to build the gradation here. And just like I read in the post-it note, yes, you, you're, you're seeing that I am using a little bit more of the alizarin, the alizarin crimson permanent in the cheeks. Very simple plane change right there. And I really am trying to, uh, you know, paint the mask of the face, all of these large structures, because the features, the features themselves won't be so difficult once we have these large structures all figured out. And again, the painting, I would still say, is in awkward stage, and that's okay.
my um, my teacher uh, and friend Paulden Hamilton. I've heard him say this uh, several times before. I'm not sure if this quote goes to him or not. Um, or I don't know if he came up with this or someone else did and he was quoting someone. But anyway, uh, one thing I would hear him say often is uh, stumble forward in error. Meaning, you know, don't be worried. Don't worry about, you know, the, the more you worry about your painting, the more harm you'll actually do to your painting. Painting is just one of those things that somehow the viewer tends to know whether or not you enjoyed the process involved in creating that painting, whether it be in the way that you applied the brush strokes or, you know, the way the final painting looks. That's just something that the viewer can kind of tell. Can't explain why it is, but I'm pretty sure that the viewer can tell, and I'm sure you can tell. Uh, whether or not I'm enjoying the process or not. And I'll tell you, I, I do tend to get kind of bored if I have a finished outline and then I have to just go and fill it in. Yes, it may be relaxing sometimes, but it just it sometimes it bores me, to be honest. Sometimes it just feels really defeating when I have, uh, you know, a perfectly finished outline. And then all I have to do is just underpaint it and fill it in and... I don't know. Just these days, I, I don't want to do that. I will, though. You know me. I will bounce around back and forth between the Alla Prima technique and the classical approach. And right now, I'm just trying to keep all of the shapes simple and easy. So let's try this again. Let's see if anyone can finish my statement. Keep your shapes simple and easy. Okay, go ahead and comment down below if you can finish my sentence. All right, so keep your shapes simple and easy so that when the time comes to make changes, those changes will be simple and easy to manage. That will certainly happen to us. So I kind of obl obliterated the uh, little dark shape that I had down there. So again, I'm gonna be going back and forth, but you know, I think really it's time to start to bring out the smaller brushes and get us into close-up shots and really start to bring some of these forms to life. Um, so let me go ahead and get those brushes out. I'm actually going to continue to use this dark brush that you've seen me use there. I know that we're missing an ear and stuff there, but we'll, we'll get to that, don't worry. I'm going to use, uh, let's say, maybe this will be my light brush with the blue tape. This will be my middle brush. And then this will be my dark brush, the brush you've already seen me use. So with the middle brush, you know, I think the first thing I'm going to do is just start to address uh, the structures around this little triangle here. So the eyes and the nose. So I'm going to start off with the, uh, with the dark. So I'm going to use ivory black, burnt umber, a little bit of alizarin permanent. And I'm going to go right here right into this darker shape. And again, I'm not terribly worried about whether or not, you know, any one little detail is in the exact place that it needs to be. Because again, we're working in such a holistic way, in such a kind of free way that, um, such a freeing kind of way that we're gonna be able to come back in and make adjustments. So it'll be no problem. A little more heat into this. So the alizarin permanent. And there is a little bit of an angle. So while we're putting in these brush strokes, let's look at that angle. Tiniest bit though, but there is a little bit of an angle, but I think that this is too exaggerated. So just a little bit. I'm going to push that up. So 
So again, we're starting off with the darks. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do now that we, ha now that we have those uh, dark shapes in there, let's see, I should get a brush smaller for this, but I don't know. Let's see how we manage with this. So I'm gonna combine ivory black and titanium white. I'm gonna put a little bit of Neo-McGill medium, just to increase the fluidity. So let's say around this value family, and then I'm just gonna add some flesh tone to it, and you may already know what I'm going to create with this color. So how about, let's, let's get you into close-up shot now. So now with this color, We're just gonna put in the light for the sclera. And I know it's gonna look it's gonna look a little strange because we don't have the um, you know the, uh, the iris showing. But we're gonna treat the eye like a sphere. So the areas that are going to be facing the light more, such as over here, are going to be lighter the areas that are facing the light less are gonna be darker, such as that corner over there. And again, I've been doing the best I could, I can, I've been doing the best I can to eliminate useless brush strokes. So I'm trying to optimize as much as I possibly can. So that's about the angle that I want, I hope. And that's about the uh, color that I want for that. So let's return to the palette. 